everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, this is part two of a two-part video on the uh, Insta360 Link 4K webcam. Now, in part one, I explained why I got it. I'll briefly uh, recap on that in, in a second. And uh, it, it was mainly part one comparing it to my Canon M50 digital SLR. Now, you might think that's a bit of an unfair comparison. You're comparing chalk and cheese. They're not designed to do the same thing. And, and you're right. But I did use the Canon as my webcam. I tried a webcam when I first started this sort of channel four years ago. I tried this one. It's still reasonably well respected, a Logitech 920. And, and I found it was okay, but not brilliant. The focus and, and the colour and that wasn't that great. Nothing like as good as the Canon. And obviously the sound wasn't, wasn't so good, but that, that's by the by, it's just a camera. So I've been constantly looking out for something of as good quality as the Canon, but in the small form factor of a web camera. The main reason being, again, I said it on part one, but I'll repeat it. That is what I used to use for my webcam. Now that was placed behind my monitor with the uh, the camera faced at me and the thing screen flipped out so I could see line it up and that was a webcam connected to the PC with a USB lead and a dummy battery pack powered by a wall plug so that I never ran out of battery power. But the trouble with that was every time I wanted to use it for filming outside, for doing stuff like the dash cam in the car, reviewing tools outside and stuff. I had to take it from behind, unplug everything, unplug the USB lead and the dummy battery pack, put a battery in, put an SD card in, do the filming, then bring it all back in here, put it behind the monitor again and to, to do this bit. So it was a bit of a bind doing that. So I've been looking for a really, really, really good crystal clear webcam and i've definitely found it in this it's absolutely brilliant so like i said that that part one if you haven't checked it out check it out up here i'll stick a, a tab up here to click on that that tests it against the canon in low light in bright light in 1080p in 4k and it tests the internal mic of the insta against the internal mic of the Canon against the Samsung Meteor mic I'm using now. This video, there'll be no mic tests or low light tests or anything like that. All this video is about is explaining the um, browser, if you will, the all the controls of the software you get with the uh, Instalink and going through every page, every tab and showing how to, to how you can adjust the contrast, the, the color, all the usual things the gimbal control, how you can control that, the auto zoom, it's got a feature called AI zoom and if ever you've seen the film Jaws where he sat on the beach and he first spots the shark they do this thing called a dolly zoom where the camera is pulled back on rails while the cameraman zooms in on the subject's face. So the face stays the same size but the background sort of zooms in and it gives you that sort of moving depth of field view first used in alfred hitchcock's vertigo by the way well it's got this camera the instalink has got a little feature like that obviously not as smooth as a professional equipment but it's quite good fun and uh, loads of stuff i won't be using but one feature again and all explained in this video called desktop where it can look down at your desktop in front of your keyboard and make it look like it's a vertical uh, view it's brilliant the way it does it again i'll fully demonstrate it in this and it'll be great for me doing reviews of, of little things showing you as if it was a, an up down view because i again i had to sort of like take this out set it up on the camera point it downwards with it with a light and everything and oh it was an absolute bind messing about so now the cannon can stay in a drawer until it's needed for use outside 
and great i can just use this because as you can see the quality is fantastic so hopefully in this video it explains what all the menu items are and like i say i'll start along the bottom and go through every single tab and there's three pages of different settings gimbal control camera control and stuff like that and I'll, I'll hopefully explain everything now during the video i'm going to be putting up in the corner um up here up here whatever a little inset of the camera in use filmed by the the canon so you'll see as i move around and as the camera moves around tracking me and, and doing its stuff you'll see how quick and that it moves its little head so uh that i'll put that in a little yellow box uh, above now i've filmed all this in uh, obs i'm not giving any instructions how to set it up in obs it's just like setting up any other 4k uh, webcam and there's hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube on uh, done more professionally than me, explaining it better than I can on how to set it up in OBS. But it is quite straightforward. So uh, I'll leave that to you. If you do, it works fantastic in OBS. Just check out one of them if you, if you need to know how to set it up. But because I've got a ultra wide screen monitor, it is when I'm showing you the, the, the browser window and the, the, the controls, it is in widescreen so you've got your two bands above i had to do it like that so i could because it places the sort of control panel on the right hand side so let's uh, check it out now all the controls are shown all clicked in real time the little insert above like i said is is synced in so as i'm doing it it's doing it live so you can have a look what the camera does and uh, hopefully this explains everything and then at the end we'll do a quick summing up and uh, outro so uh, let's get straight into how you use the little thing now okay so i'm going to do a complete run through now of every button every screen that I can find on this so again apologies it'll go on and on and on but uh, hopefully it will be useful for anybody who's stuck on one particular bit and they can you can always zoom in on the timeline below i'll try and itemize every little bit and uh, you can just pick the one you want so hopefully it'll be very very comprehensive so i'm going to turn me uh, digital slr on now and that can be filming the uh, the insta 360 link as it moves around and, oops, not on the mic and as it moves around and does its stuff okay so when using link with other software please turn off the preview in the link controller so if you click that button there the preview will go off. You've got to do that if you're using it in OBS. So normally I will not be using this software for screen recording, as I'll mention when I get to the button. Um, this is the software screen that you can see now, and you can see the top and bottom are cut off because I'm on a, an ultra wide monitor and it's to get the menu in at the side. So. So starting off at the very bottom left, like I say, is preview on and off. Click that when you want to turn the preview off. If I turn it off now, you see it goes off and you need it off to uh, open up the view in OBS. But I'll turn it back on because I'm recording this in OBS, but just on the screen capture part of it. Next one along is the resolution we're in, 3840 by 2160. So we're in 4K at the moment. And you can pick from 4K, you can pick from full HD, so that's 1080p. Or you can pick from that one, 720p, which is classed as a just standard HD, I think. So we'll go back up to 4K. There is a lot of one second delay as it switches from one to the other. Right, moving along, the next one on the bottom is the first of them four buttons on the bottom is the tracking button. So at the moment now, we're not tracking. You can see I move my head around and it doesn't follow me. If I want to track my head, click that button. And now as I move around, so I'm going to have to be extra careful. You've spotted me donut here for later on. Um, when I'm doing future films, because I'm going to have to make sure I've got a tidier desk than normal. But uh, yeah, and up and down, obviously. 
and you can see the uh, the gimbal moving in the picture in the uh, at the top there. So next button along is whiteboard. Now what this is, I mentioned it in sort of like the mini unpacking. You get four little stickers with this camera, like little ninety degree sort of stickers. These things here on here. And what you do is you put them one each side, each corner of your whiteboard. So if you're doing a presentation, if you're a teacher in a class doing a presentation and you want the camera to swing to the whiteboard, put them in each corner of it and the camera will then recognise them. Now I haven't got a whiteboard and I don't think I'll ever be using one. So what I've done just to demo this is just stick it to a bit of foam. I'm going to put that on that there now it's got to be within three meters for it to lock on to and when it does lock on you'll see it's not sort of quite lined up well that's because i haven't absolutely put these things level if you were on a proper rectangular whiteboard you would you'd have them exactly aligned with the corners and it'd be perfectly centered so as soon as we click this button now you should see the color change on the top here this colored LED bar and it should lock onto them think hey that's the whiteboard I can see the four corners and it should zoom in on it so uh, let's try that now so it's turned yellow it's uh, looking around for it it's sort of centered it up and there whack it's zoomed straight in to the whiteboard so uh, pretty uh, clever how it does that so if you were presenting a class you could just click on that button or do a hand gesture which i'll show you shortly and it will go straight to the whiteboard when you're finished and you want it to come back to you just click the whiteboard button again and uh, it's back on you so next one i'll, I'll leave the whiteboard thing there because i'll be showing you the hand gesture Next one is overhead mode. Now what overhead mode does, it flips, as you'll see in a minute, you'll see it moving on, on this camera. It flips the head of the camera down 90 degrees till it's looking vertically down. Well, at the moment, as you can see, all that would show is the top of the monitor. So if I click that now, it goes green, you saw it move down, and all you can see is like the blurred top of the monitor click it and it comes up but what you'd use that for is if I take this off here now you could put that on a tripod with the tripod mount and then and no, I'll just get my hand out of the way a bit hard to line it up in both cameras but if I uh, put it on now, it's, it's motored down and you can see it's looking directly down now at the top of the uh, the Amazon show and my keyboard. And if I click it again, it's come up to normal. So we'll place that back where it was. So that's your overhead mode. Now this next mode is really clever, I think, and this will be useful for me. It's called desk view mode. Now what that does, as you can see the little camera on it there, the little thing, it's, it's looking sort of forwards at an angle, sort of like a, like a 45 degree angle or whatever, at just in front, in my case, just in front of my lap here. I've got the keyboard quite near the monitor, so it's just going to show, and I'm on a curved desk, it's just going to show the curved um, thing. So if I click that there, I'll show you what I mean. You can see it moved down, and that's me. That's the, the beer belly and the curve of the desk. And you can see it sort of like distorts your hands. Now the reason for that is it's making the perspective look as if it's from above. So I'll just click that back up to show you. What I'm going to do is, when I get time, I'm going to make myself sort of like a, 
a board about this size, white coloured board or whatever. But I'm just using this black foam for now to show you. And I'll just show you what I mean. If I, uh, with the manual controls, which I'll show you shortly. So I've put that there in front of me, and I'm going to put this remote control on now. So if I just filmed it like that, normal, just with the gimbal sort of moved down, it wouldn't be much use for showing you like a, a simulated overhead shot. But if I put the gimbal back to normal now and I can select this mode, desk view mode, it's now looking down at that. And as you can see, it's as if it's... I'll level that up now. It's as if it's an overhead shot. And I can zoom in on that. So I could be demoing an item, showing you how to solder something or something like that. And it's as if the camera is above, but it isn't. It's altering the perspective to make it look like that. Like I said, my hands, you can see the things are a lot longer than normal but that looks absolutely normal another object there it's, it's as if the camera was from above you're going to get some perspective alteration but uh, it's a really clever idea i think so uh, that will be quite handy so click like that get rid of this so that's your four buttons at the bottom. Now this one here at the extreme right hand side is screenshot. Now, if I click that, so I just got to turn the uh, digital SLR off and on because it only records for a certain amount of time. Um, yeah, if we click screenshot, obviously click that, it saved it to F pictures and you can select up here extreme right hand up here the three dots preferences you can select your saved location there so for the screenshots is f pictures video save location it's, it's a different place and the, the other thing on there is your language obviously an audio device the built-in microphone i'm doing this like i say through obs using me meteor mic but if you were recording using this software you could click on that and use its internal mic or the samsung meteor mic but like i say i'm not going to use this software for uh, for this reason if you click on record video again there it's counting down one two three when we click off it stores it to our saved directory, but it saves that as an AVI file, which Premiere, uh, the editing software I use, doesn't like. So I tried turning it through a video converter called VideoProc into an MP4, which it did, but whether it was something to do with that, I don't know, but all the sound, the audio, went totally out of sync. Started off all right, but as the video progressed, even after about a minute, it was visibly out of sync by about half a second so and getting worse. So this recording software is not very good at all. Like I say, I wouldn't advise it. Use just something like OBS to, to do your recordings like I do. So that's all the buttons on the bottom. So as we get over to the right-hand side, and like I say, you're seeing this, because I'm on an ultra-wide monitor, so the only way I can get this control thing in view is you're seeing the bars top and bottom at the moment. The very, very top is that menu I've just shown you. This one here is to drop it down, drop the controls down into just a bar along the bottom. So if I press them now, you'll see at the moment, because this is what I'm using to record this video, OBS, but all the... Most of the controls are there. I click on that, we're back to uh, where we were. 
And then here you've just got your normal full screen shrink and turn off. So the first of your three sort of separate windows under here is gimbal control, which is exactly as it suggests. So this is like a little joystick here. Now I'm going to turn off at the bottom here, I'm going to turn off tracking to demo this because if you try moving the gimbal round while the tracking is on, and like I said, the tracking, uh, I don't know, tracking is off at the moment. So yeah, so if your tracking was on and you're trying to move your gimbal, it doesn't move as freely. So make sure your tracking is turned off. And then if you want to move your gimbal manually, this knob in the middle is like a, a knob on, say, a radio control or whatever, and you can move that around, or you can click on these four arrows. So if I click on the middle and move it up, we move it up and down. So you can get right low down there. You can get right up to... vertically upwards and if you want to get back to the beginning the middle you click the little circle there on the right hand side if you click the arrows it just moves up a midges each time so that's sort of like a more ac accurate way of doing it but a bit slower and then underneath you've got your zoom control so you can zoom in and in 4K, obviously, can stay, still say highly detailed. And zoom out. And here, I've got these two positions printed, so I'll delete them just to show you what this is. Now, a preset position, this is quite handy. What you can do is move your camera round, left, right, up and down, and the zoom position to a certain position. So say I want to regularly show me 3D printer behind me. So if I move this over there, get it near the middle, then I can get it there. You can see uh, the Canon I'm filming the, uh, the little gimbal on the top with. And... I'll zoom in to the 3D printer. Now where it says there, preset position, I can add, click that, add, and that's added position one. If I right click on that, I can rename it. So I can rename that printer. Okay. So I can now go back to where I was and I'll pick somewhere else to film so I'll do say the the door handle there go down a bit and zoom in there on the door handle click at that position to right click rename it I'll just call it door you can do that as many times as you like click the little circle up there to go back to normal and now when i click on these oh that didn't rename it rename it i mustn't have clicked enter printer enter if i click on that now printer it should immediately zoom and it's really really quick the way it motors motors and zoom straight into the printer and the same for the door so i'll click printer now and there you are it sort of zooms in and then it, it, it positions it sort of precisely at the memorized position and if i click door it now instantly motors over to the door and lines it up so again if you look up here in the um at the top as i click from door to printer you'll see how quick the little thing moves so really really good and then again up there click to show me so that's all your gimbal controls now this one here image settings top one is auto exposure if you find that this isn't working, if it's greyed out, 
it's because in the next menu there you've got HDR set. I'll just show you that now, but we'll come back to that. And then if I go back to image settings, you can see I can't alter the exposure, the auto exposure. So that confused me at first. I thought this button's not working. It's because I had HDR turned on in here. So again, we'll go back to the middle menu and you've got auto exposure on or off. I've got it on auto. If you turn it off, you can set your ISO there. So at the moment it's set at 500. So right up from uh, 100 up to 32. So if you're familiar with film cameras and that, that makes more sense to you. 500. Uh, and your shutter speed at the moment it's set at 150th. So if you're experiencing any sort of flickering and that, you can mess about with that. So. I'll set that again at where it was, 50th, but we got back to, um, and then, sorry, you've got your exposure curve here. So if you're used to sort of like Photoshop or, uh, say, I used to sort of like do astrophotography and you use curves and levels quite a lot in there, well, you can put points on the curve. The higher up are the, uh, the high tones, the lower down are the dark tones. And you can put your own sort of light curve on it. So I increase the light tones there and decrease the shadows to your heart's content. You, you wouldn't really need all this control. Um, but as you can see, it's made the picture look pretty awful now. So I click reset and everything goes back to normal. And I'll click on auto exposure. Now, again, auto white balance, and I found all the auto settings on this fantastic. It's straight out of the box. I've not had to mess about. There's no yellowness like there is in some uh, webcams. Auto white balance on auto. It's showing 2000K there. Uh, if I turn that off, you can go anywhere from... Yeah, it's showing that it wasn't at 2000K. That's just the lower set, so really uh, cold and blue right up to uh, totally uh, too warm a temperature but if you click on auto it's uh, pretty uh, accurate but like I said that's, that reading there is only when you're on manual and then again you've got brightness here but you can see everything's set at 50 and everything looks pretty uh, pretty good i wouldn't really want to alter anything this red is accurate this is the color that is the color of the walls of the shed they are really, really good but yeah turn your brightness up and down contrast up and down saturation go down to black and white if you wanted but like that i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't normally use that and sharpness you can make it look really really rough your skin rougher than it is and then just reset everything back to uh no. and once you've done all that and you're happy you can save it as a preset so that's all your image settings and then you've got your more settings here now enable auto tracking so with that on as soon as somebody sits down in front of the thing it, it, it locks onto you and it starts tracking but you can turn that off if you want it says link will start tracking when you manually adjust the gimbal towards someone and then here enable single tap tracking so i'll just demonstrate that now that is on now i can tap the actual camera itself just the base of the camera so you wouldn't so if you were in say obs filming and you wanted it to track and not track Instead of bringing up the menu or clicking your mouse on it, you could just tap the camera. So I'll show you that now. As you can see, it's not tracking me now. And I could press the uh, the button here on the screen. There, to turn tracking on and off. Not tracking me, but if I tap, if you look at the picture above, if I tap the camera, just one tap, 
he says. Go, let's have a look. Turn it on and off. Right, if I tap it now, yeah, it's tracking now, as you can see. Tap it again. Flash is blue. Tracking has now stopped. Tap it again. Flash is blue. <laughs> tap it again. Stops. You've got to sort of tap it right. Uh, sometimes it takes a couple of taps, but you know when it's worked when it turns blue. So that's your uh, single tap tracking. Now, this one here, this automatic zoom, next one down, it's, uh, it's very clever. I'll show you what it does. If we click that on, I don't know whether you remember, in the film I remember it in is Jaws, where he's sat on the beach and he's looking out and he first thinks, spots the shark. It's called a dolly zoom in the film, and it's where the camera is on the dolly, on the rails, and they, they pull the camera back on the rails, but as it's pulling back, they zoom in on the subject, like the head. So what happens is the head stays the same size, but the background moves out. And it's called a dolly zoom. Evidently, the very first film it took, uh, it was used in is Vertigo, Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. But the one I remember it in was um, Jaws, and evidently it's used in Goodfellas a lot as well. I've, I've never seen Goodfellas. So if I show you what I mean, if we put it on head and uh, uh, auto zoom on and off, as I move my head towards and away from the camera you'll see it'll try and keep me head the same size but it will move the background in and out so if I move back now it's trying to keep my head the same size by moving the background if we go on half body I'm going to walk to the end of to the observatory door there and then walk up to the camera and you should hopefully see me staying about the same size the upper half of my body it should have zoomed in and that should stay the same size all the way from the door over there to the front here but the background will alter so see this now if it works so it's trying to keep me the same And if I was on rails, it'd be a lot uh, easier. But so there's a move back. I'm back now, but it's zoomed in on me. It's keeping me the same, but that background is moving. Oh, it's not brilliant. Don't do it all the time, but it's something to play away, play around with. But uh, quite clever, I think. Uh, if we go back on head, a bit better on head. Physically in the same size there as I move to the camera. Background alters. Yeah, so quite good. So anti-flicker, again, I've got it on auto at the moment. You can see there's no flickering on the wall due to the, uh, the hertz. I'm in the UK, so we're on 50 hertz mains here. Uh, the USA is 60, I believe. So you can do that and you can go on manual. If I click 60 hertz, you can see it starts flickering. See a bit behind me, this uh, blackboard here behind me, flickering there and the white stuff at the back because we're on 60 hertz. Go on 50 and it stops. So I'll go on auto. If you find it on auto, it's flickering. Just try manually doing that. The next one now, we've got autofocus. So that's the one you'll have it on most of the time because, like I showed you before, it really, really is good. So, uh, yeah.
bit of trivia for you. That was a seven point stinker in the quiz. Always one of the quizzes we do, one of the three pub quizzes a week I do. They have a picture called the seven point stinker. And, uh, whoops, who do you reckon that is? Evidently, it's a boxer called Primo Carve Carnera. Primo Carvera, or whatever. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, autofocus would be what you have it on most of the time, but you can pick manual focus there and adjust it yourself. So, if you wanted to suddenly focus on something in the background, uh, you could use that, but. I think it's, it's so good, I'll be sticking to autofocus. So we've got this streamer mode here. Next button down, if we hover over it, it says enables portrait mode 9 to 16 and 50, 60 frames per second in streaming software. So uh, I'm not familiar with streaming software. I don't do any live streaming, but uh, if you are, you'll probably know you'll be able to set the frame rate. You can see it wanting in and out now because I've still got it on that to AI zoom. So I'm going to turn that off. If you find you're doing that, it's sort of like pulsing in and out. Turn that off. Um, so yeah, the streamer mode, uh, you can set it at a higher frame rate and set it so it looks like you're filming on a phone, like it's in uh, portrait mode. Again, something I won't uh, be doing. And then smart adjustment. After the video is turned on, the camera will search for faces in a small area and adjust for the best viewing angle. So yeah, so as soon as you start up, it looks at your face and uh, sets up the angle and that. You can turn that on or off. Now your high definition here, HDR, it's not supported when you're on 4K or you're using that streaming app um, 50 to 60 um, frame per second thing so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the light off the uh, SLR so you'll see the image at the top go a bit grainy and I'm just going to show you roughly what it does so we're in as you see bottom left we're in 4k now I'm going to turn all the lights in the room off so turn the overhead light off and uh, Alexa, turn off dimmer. Okay. So we're in a, a darkened room now, just a tiny bit of light coming through the window. So we're not in HDR at the moment. I'm going to turn this light on and flood my face with light to make it... Uh, just to show you, to try and compensate. So like I say, we're not in HDR at the moment. If I turn it on, because we're in 4K, it sort of like tries, but it doesn't do anything. If I turn this on and shine it out my face, you can see it's totally washed out my face. Put it there at the, around my chin. That is totally washed out now. With the HD is on, and I'll click HD off. Or whether it's... Uh, off so there's a slight delay going on and off but it hasn't actually done anything because that's off and that's on so it's just about the same that's because down here we're in 4k but if we go down to 1080p you can see now with hdr on it's trying to compensate and you can see some of the features around my chin. If we turn HDR off, it's totally washed out there. And the background is totally black because the camera is just focusing on this. Turn HDR on and background to me, uh, this side has gone a bit better, but you can see me in my face, you can see some features you can see the top of my head there without with hdr high, 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 high dynamic range off it's just a total white patch if i turn it on it does try and compensate and you can see some hair but uh, yeah so if you're in a, a certainly lit room it might might work in, in certain ways but uh, again not something i don't i think i'll be ever using so alexa turn 
dim it to 100%. Okay. And I'll turn the overhead light on again. Put this back on the cannon. And uh, we're getting there slowly. Mirror image there at the bottom, obviously. Click on that and we flip to a mirror image. All the text is backwards. Click back to normal. And then we've got firmware version and the serial number. So that is it. That is all. Like I say, if you can't see them, scroll all the way down and I did miss because I was already scrolled down at the bottom so I missed these top ones so we will scroll up and uh, I'll show you these so we started I think on enable auto tracking you can set the tracking speed so if I said it's slow now you can see it is sort of quite slow i'll move fast but there's a bit of a lag with it catching up on me if you look at the top the camera how fast it's moving if we go on to normal again i'll move fast that's the normal speed and if you go on fast it should probably almost keep up with me just slightly quicker than it is but a lot lot faster now these top settings here gesture settings the auto tracking the zoom and the whiteboard function you can select with a gesture instead of clicking down here on the menu you can uh, do it with like say a gesture and I'll show you that. So auto tracking now. So we're on, as you see, tracking. If I hold my palm up like that, if you look at the camera at the top, it flashed blue. And now tracking is off. Again, I'll hold my uh, hand up. If you watch the picture at the top of the camera, it turns from green to blue. back to green tracking is now back on so zoom now this is the one I've had a bit of sort of trouble with it's a lot easier clicking on the, the zoom control on the gimbal control but it's like an L shape and you can see it's flashing blue now I think it's sort of thinking about it oh yeah did it, it went up and down it tends to work better if I'm further away so again color is green at the top of the camera now I go on there I can move up zoom in and I can zoom out it's quite a lot of hand movement for a bit of zoom so it won't go you'd have to move it out of shot to go zoom fully in and fully out but uh, it is there and finally so i'm going i'll just uh so we're on zoomed in now so uh, i'm just going to go back at the top a gimbal control and and we're now zoomed out if ever you find out that your shot doesn't look as it normally does oh i'm gone we're still on there uh, 1920 but 1080 go back to 4k if you find ever you sat there and it's not as wide as you think the view, check that you you are zoomed out on there. So if we go back to more settings, the final one is whiteboard, which I showed you behind. And like I said, normally you would click on this second symbol in here at the uh, at the bottom. But if I want to select it manually with a gesture it's a v sign so let's see if this works it's 
flashing blue it's in something let's see it's moving around now thinking about it it's gone yellow see right it had a glitch then it had to think about it and uh, went off and then on so uh, I'm gonna click it off and try it again so I'm gonna center it up on me right you saw it had a bit of a glitch there and uh, it's come back I'm not sure whether we were on 4k before but I've noticed it's on 1080p now so I'll go back up to 4k Right, we're at 4k now so i'll do it this time with me uh with the v on the other side it's probably it might have been because i was in front of the board itself so uh let's see where it does this time it's flashed blue it's gone yellow motoring over now and um, yeah it's uh zoomed in on the whiteboard so uh yeah bit of a glitch then we'll try it one more time turn the whiteboard thing off do it again flash blue it's gone yellow Yeah, it seemed to work that time. So, uh, so yeah, you could be you know, in front of a class of kids or whatever, and just V isn't the ideal thing to flash in front of the kids. So you just do that and uh, goes over to the whiteboard. So, yeah, I think that's everything now in these three windows that's covered. So, uh, yeah, let's just do a final uh, summing up. Okay, so as you saw... Um, pretty straightforward and everything works fantastic i love the desktop feature and uh if you're a, a presenter uh in you know doing a class an instructional class and you've got a whiteboard that is a great feature and if you're in a big room following it around the room it just works absolutely brilliant i forgot to say it's at 30 frames per second at 4k there's no option to set it at 60 i think the Elgato uh, face cam as it called has a uh, 60 frames per second option but I find that doing these just presentations 30 is fine the Canon that I used that I've used on all my videos was in 25 frames per second so for a presentation like this when you don't need to have ultra clear fast moving things um, 30 frames per second is fine the only option you've got at 60 frames is when on this camera is when it's in vlogging mode or something it puts it into like a vertical as if you're filming on your phone and then you if you whatever software you use for that you, you can use 50 or 60 frames per second but i won't be using that so it's stuck at its 30 frames per second but as you saw the 4k the focus and everything is fantastic in that so that's what i think i will be doing all my future videos in so yeah absolutely love it and will thoroughly recommend it now i'll put the links below uh where i got it like i said i show that on part one in detail but i got it from ebay uh which i don't normally use again i mentioned why on part one uh, but i'll give a link to ebay and he was a great seller very very reliable next day delivery seller much much cheaper than amazon uh, and I'll put an Amazon link as well. Now, they are affiliated links. If you do click on them and uh, buy one or buy something from the Amazon browsing uh, session, I do get a small commission, just a few uh, pence. It helps keep the channel going. I buy all this stuff. I haven't been sent anything by any manufacturer. I'm just not big enough for a YouTuber to be important in that respect. So I buy everything myself. So hopefully uh, every little penny helps. So uh, 
yeah if you have liked it please give it a thumbs up if it's been of some use if it hasn't if you've thought i've just waffled like i usually do but that's me taking a leave it give me a thumbs down and uh, i'll catch you for the next one if you haven't subscribed please click the little picture here of the shed it'd be great if you could the more the merrier then click the little bell icon underneath and you'll be informed of any future uploads so uh, once again thanks a bunch for watching this one i'll catch you for the next one don't know what the next one will be probably something on the 3d printing i skimmed over in part one uh, again check out that some of the recent prints i've done in a new material that i've not used before so I'll probably be doing a video on that hope to catch you for that whenever so thanks again bye for now